Hi, it's Congressman Jamie Raskin uh, sending warm greetings to everybody out in Maryland's beautiful 8th Congressional District and all of our friends uh, across Maryland and uh, beyond. I'm back here at the beginning of April with my favorite time of the week, Local Hero, where we get to recognize um, the heroes in our midst, the people who are uh, getting us through the multiple crises of our day, uh, especially the plague of COVID-19. And what a remarkable local hero we have for you this week. And my friend Maria Gomez, who is the president and CEO of Mary Center. Um, and uh, Maria, first of all, congratulations on being our local hero for all the incredible stuff you do. Oh, what a privilege, Congressman. This is really great. I was so, I was just so taken by um, so many heroes, though, in this area, you know, doing such great work, you know. Um, well, yes, indeed. It, it's remarkable what's been going on. And we got, um, we got some airtime this week when um, the uh, second gentleman, the husband of Vice President Kamala Harris, decided to come and visit Mary Center in order to showcase the investment that um, America is making in community health clinics across the country through the American Rescue Act and to focus on the importance of doubling down on COVID-19 vaccines and also public health measures. So that's quite an honor that he decided to do it all at Mary Center and it was thrilling to come over and get to see you. Um, how did you uh, experience his visit there? Oh, it was so wonderful. First of all, I wanna say personally, thank you so much, uh, Congressman Raskin, for being there, uh, for, for your presence in the midst of everything that you have gone through this year. Um, it is truly an honor to, to have you present um, and, to, and to consider me as a hero. Um, you are the hero, uh, honestly. Um, his, the second gentleman's presence was, uh, first of all, an honor um, you know, to acknowledge, I think for our staff that have been on the front lines and have suffered so much in regards to COVID, in regards to all that I mentioned at that meeting in regards to the just the, the, the whole issue of, of um, you know, what uh, our African-American community is, is suffering in terms of, of the injustices that are happening now, uh, in addition to the fact that, you know, there was in the beginning uh, a lack of, of PPE, a lack of equipment for us to be able to really, um, uh, you know, implement all that we needed to implement. Um, it, it's just a recognition that our model really works and that when you look at healthcare, you look at education, you look at social supports for families, um, you really are addressing all of the disparities that um, our low resource communities have in our, in our community of color. So um, his presence is really, um, you know, justified so much of what we've been doing for the last year, but also just, you know, um, what we've been doing for the last 33 years. And then let me go to that because it has been um, a 33 year investment of your life and your heart and your mind in building this amazing community institution. Tell us how Mary Center got started because I know you were just serving a relative handful of people, a couple hundred people. Today you're serving 60,000 people. And tell us about how you first conceived of it and how it was built. So, um, so I think that, that First of all, I, I just, as an immigrant, uh, so privileged, uh, Congressman, and this is an example of, of what immigrants in this community, um, but we can look forward to, right? To so many immigrants, just like immigrants in the past, you know, just like your forefathers and, and all of our listeners are forefathers. But I think, um, you know, having had the privilege of getting an education, which I would never would have had back home, um, and, and, and being able to pay it forward, right? So um, graduating from Georgetown and having had several jobs, um, both in the federal and in the private sector, I decided to come back to community during the time when the war in Central America were really, really hot, right? Salvador, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and all that, and the big influx of immigrants coming in here at that time in the 80s. And um, to make a long story short, just I felt like, um, you know, where do we start? There's so many needs. Um, and I knew that that um, young parents or expecting parents uh, was really maybe a place to start. And, and um, with the help of so many people in the community, we were able to, um, you know, take on uh, a program that another entity did not want to 
uh, carry on anymore because they were concentrating on the homeless. And that population was the pregnant women. And so we were able to start the Mary Center really concentrating on pregnant women and being able to give them the sanctuary that they needed. Um, as many of them were crossing the, 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 the border and got raped around that, that, that time and ended up pregnant. And so um, it, it was just a, a, a place for us to be able to have that sanctuary for pregnant women. And, but it was also at the time when HIV AIDS was really very big, also in, in, in this, particularly in the city in DC, um, HIV was really big, infant mortality, uh, mortality for pregnant women, uh, and all of the things like diabetes, hypertension, all were very, very, very poor in the city uh, and, and also in the suburbs with some of our low resource communities. So we started the program uh, concentrating on pregnant women and little by little through the community, by listening to the community and listening to our providers, um, we started providing pediatric care and then home visitation. And then when we were able to become a federally qualified health center in 2009, we were able actually to bring in the whole family. So we were able to bring the parents and the grandparents and everybody. And so now we're, um, you know, 30, 33 years later, we are a, a health center that, that is a um, fairly qualified health center. We're able to, to actually see the entire family and to see them um, in a model that is really not just healthcare, but also supporting their, their, their needs in terms of housing and education and, and, um, and food and those kinds of things, but also education for both the parents and the children. So that's, that's really the model. And I think that that's the model that, that the second gentleman really enjoyed, right? That the ability to have a model that really um, uh, took into fold the entire, the entire community, the entire family. And it's such a remarkable story to begin with that focus on pregnant women and moms and the act of childbirth. And then in a way that focus gave birth to the growth of your whole institution mm -hmm. to address all of the needs of the family, the parents and children and pediatrics. And, you know, to today where you're a major um, force in providing COVID-19 vaccine in the community. Tell us um, a, a report on how that's going. Um, um, and, and then also just restate for people the importance of the public health um, protective measures keeping yeah. those going. Yeah, so first of all, I think that um, I, I, we're so um, beyond ourselves with um, this American Rescue Plan because for the first time, health centers of our size, which are over 700 people that we have employed, uh, and most of them, by the way, <laughs> live in Montgomery County. We have many, many people who live in Montgomery County and, and, and also Prince George's of our employees. And so um, that, that, that public health piece is actually really about making sure that, that we're not only providing the services you know, inside our four walls, but that we're also providing them outside, going to the different neighborhoods, going to all of the churches and, and you know, malls or wherever it is that the people are, uh, the workplaces to make sure that we were testing people to make sure that we are providing, um, you know, the vaccinations. And so um, it, in that, in that fold, it's about that, but it's also about making sure that, that we partner with people to, to make sure that if they're, if we're doing the testing that we're also uh, are making sure we're connecting people or that we're doing the testing alongside people who are providing food, people who are providing housing uh, to make sure that the people know where the shelters are, um, so that if they have to isolate, that they can do that. And by the way, Montgomery County, I just want to uh, say to you, you guys have done an amazing job on the government side to make sure that all of the services are there. Um, and there's never, never, no one will ever have 100%, but um, it's an amazing, it's an amazing job that, that has been done in Montgomery County for that. Um, I think that part of, part of what um, I wanted to say is that, you know, we've, we've, test, we've tested over 3,000 uh, individuals for for our um, for the for the I mean, not tested provided vaccines for, um, for for the community and um, and that has been amazing as going the Moderna and the Johnson and Johnson um, I think that one of the pieces that that we are trying to really work with the with the um, Department of Health in Montgomery County is to make sure that the word gets out that the facts right you know that so much of what happens is that people are hesitant because they're not getting the facts about, about uh, why they should get vaccinated, the importance of it. 
And um, so, yeah. Well, the, the second gentleman and I got to tour your beautiful new mobile van that's going to be going, driving around into communities to uh, provide vaccines to people, especially in neighborhoods that have been hard hit by COVID-19. Um, and we're excited about that. Um, so thank you for helping to get the word out that people need to you know, maintain the masking in public, maintain the public distancing, because there is uh, a surge that is coming now because of spring break and because people think that we're close to the end of it. We are close to the end of it, but that means that people need to be extra sure to use their masks until you get vaccinated twice and you've you know gotten to that point and then still you keep the masks on until exactly. every through it, right? Yeah, exactly. And I just want to give you an example of like states like in Michigan. You know, you I've seen in the in the in the uh, news now that Michigan, who has lifted the requirements for for masks, the surge is just going up tremendously. And so those states, you see, it's it's so evident. The map is this way, right? You yeah. stop, you wearing the mask. You do the stop doing the distance and stop washing your hands. You know, and and the travel, right? The travel is yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Well, so Maria, what we're marking a lot of um, a lot of things today. We're marking this great visit that you received from this uh, uh, political luminary nationally uh, who came to Montgomery County to see. Mary Center, uh, we're, we're marking your uh, new offensive in the uh, fight to take down COVID-19 and to crush the disease. But we're also marking a more melancholy occasion, which is you announced this week that you will be retiring after 33 years of making this your life's work. Um, and, uh, you know, it would make me really sad, except nobody deserves a break more than you do. Tell us, um, what, what you're going to be doing, and we trust that you're going to be real close, and you're still going to be a vibrant part of our community. Uh, we sure will, and I, I think that um, I think my family deserves it, right? Um, I have uh, a child in in uh, med school, and she's in her second year, and I think I owe it to her and to my husband to spend time together, uh, more time together, as, as you know more than anyone else, how valuable um, life is, you know, and, and 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 you know we need to we need to take time with our families. Um, but I think that this will also give us the time um, for me to really um, step out out of the business of of running a business, which is which is really what Mary Center is at this point, you know, with a seventy two million dollar um, budget to really step out and to really look at, um, at what are the things that that are in my heart and why I started all this work. And I think I want to spend more time on, um, on really working on what can I do um, on, on this whole voting thing, right? Voting rights, um, that is just, um, it, as, a, as, a, as an immigrant, there's it's nothing more that I cherish than the freedom to be able to vote um, and to have that voice. So I want to spend time on that. I want to spend time um, and on education and healthcare, you know, to continue to make sure that we make the strides and continue to make sure that ACA continues to flourish um, for everyone and to make sure that we link education and healthcare because they're so intertwined. We can't learn unless we're healthy. Um, and we're, when, when we're healthy, we can find jobs and we can learn better and we can have jobs that actually give, give us insurance. So I want to spend time on that. And um, I love to, you know, be able to mentor the next generation of nurses, the next generation of healthcare uh, executives that I think, um, and I like to find a place. I don't, I don't have a PhD, so I'm pretty sure, you know, universities will have a hard time. But um, the, the, I have had some experience with um, a Georgetown to teach classes, a couple of, of, of time, a couple of classes, and and uh, I enjoy that because I think, um, I think that that. Um, the, the one thing that I, I have so much is, is um, knowledge all these years and, uh, and uh, I want to continue learning and I want to pass on that, that, that knowledge to the next generation. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, what a splendid statement of your values and um, the great public philosophy that you created around health and education being connected. And I'm so happy to hear you talk about voting rights because we've seen such a terrible assault mm -hmm. on voting rights the uh, insurrection on January 6th was really an assault on voting rights and democracy by the people. And we continue to see, uh, you know, hundreds of bills now across the country attacking people's voting rights. Look, Maria, um, you are really such a hero to us all in 
this community. And uh, we can tell that um, you might be shifting your role by um, you know, helping to usher in a new generation of leadership at Mary Center, but we know that you are gonna to continue to be such a dynamic force in our community. Uh, I, I love hearing you say you can get to spend more time with your family, that's beautiful. And um, please accept our congratulations on being our local hero and on a job you've done just so beautifully over the years. It's, it is a tremendous honor, as I always say, you, you, are, you lead by example um, in, you are such a powerful individual and yet you are so humble. Uh, and that is so much what I value in our, in our few leaders, uh, political leaders, politicians, is that the ability to be smart, um, you know, and to think and also use your heart and be humble, you know? I think the more that we learn, the smarter that we get, the more experience we have, the more that we need to be humble. And uh, you are such a great example of that. So thank you. It's an honor to receive this honor from you. Much love to you, Maria. Stay close. All right. Take care.